afternoon. It's my honor and privilege to welcome Mr. Abhishek Gungli, Ganguly, who is the general manager of Puma India in Southeast Asia. Welcome, Mr. Ganguly, to a exchange from India, Dakshin Chat. I don't know why it's called Dakshin. Uh, you may be based in South India, but you look at the this region and you know you're truly global in that sense. But uh, since uh, you're based in South India, I guess uh, it's called the Dakshin Chat. But welcome, Abhishek, to the exchange from India pitch. Uh, brand dialogues, the Dakshin chat. Uh, how have been the last 70 days for you personally and professionally? Well, as you can imagine, Anurag, very tough. Very, very tough. And I remember uh, the suddenness of everything, you know, because we were coming from professionally, on the professional front, we were coming from a back of a fantastic year. We closed last year on a high 22% growth, fantastic growth on profitability. Uh, we became the out-and-out -out number one brand in the space of footwear and apparel and life and, and uh, accessories uh, in India, uh, in sports and lifestyle as well. All categories put together was a great year. The team was very excited to have another 20-25% growth, which means we, we our ambition that time was to almost add the size of one substantial brand in one year. So that was what we were coming from. We had a fantastic. Uh, January and February as well. And then the thing started happening. And initially, we all felt that it's a supply problem because it's happening in China. And suddenly, you know, in, in the space of two weeks, you realize that it's the world's uh, going uh, astray. And, you know, with the virus hitting everywhere. And uh, everything started shutting down uh, as, you know, across the world. First time in the history of retail, uh, modern retail at least, where things shut down, e-commerce shut down, and the business in April was zero in India, right? Because even e-commerce is not uh, was not allowed. So very difficult for I would say in India we had a fantastic run before this, uh, an amazing run when we came in in 2006, one of the last entrants. Uh, the, the the Puma story is a great story that way, is that you know coming from behind and going ahead of, of competition and creating a mark. And the team is extremely proud of doing and achieving this. We have never seen uh, a year of blip. And this is the year of blip. And we always used to say that, would we one day see some challenge? And it really happened. And it happened for such reasons. So very difficult for a team full of enthusiasm for wanting to do more, ready for do more. And how do you manage um, you know, um, failure because of something that is not in your hand. I mean, I mean, I call it failure, or failure is probably not the right word, but uh, sudden, uh, sudden downfall. Oh. Yeah, sudden downfall. And uh, so it has been tough, tough. Uh, in my additional responsibility of Southeast Asia, I had just taken over, um, taken over. You know, there is a cross-cultural thing. I had just been to Singapore in February and came back right in time. And then I was establishing the Team Connect and you know doing our ambitions for there, planning it up. And then suddenly this happened. So it has been very tough. Um, I think initially it was, it was tough. Then I think we all had to brace ourselves for it. Um, I think personally, I have really changed my outlook um, uh, towards life and business. Uh, and I've, I've realized that things can suddenly go wrong and uh, what you can't plan for. And that's the thing that you incorporate in your business and your personal life as well. So yeah, it's tough, uh, 70 days, but um, I think uh, hope uh, is something that keeps all of us going. Thank you, Abhishek, for being so real and telling us that you know this event did take a turn on your mind and on your revenues, but uh, as you said, this is hopefully temporary. And I was going to ask you that, you know, retail uh, was shut. I mean, of course, e-commerce was also shut uh, because, you know, ex, you know, shoes, clothing don't come into essential. Uh, but with this uh, increased focus on health, fitness, increasing immunity, do you think Puma and everybody in this category will benefit in the near, medium term and long term? Well, I mean, um, 
probably uh, benefiting from a pandemic which is impacting everyone is probably something very uh, difficult to explain. Yeah, I'm saying post that. Next yeah. 60, 90 days, uh, we may not have too much uh, demand coming back, but post that in a medium term, 6 to 18 months kind of horizon. Honestly, we're very lucky. Um, I am very lucky to be in a business uh, which is about sports, sportswear and fitness. Uh, because you're absolutely right. Uh, right now, everyone's realized that one's own health is the most important thing. And we have to protect that. Um, and given that we don't have control on when the vaccine is coming out and the, when the world will come back to complete normalcy, um, we have to live with it. And the best thing that you can do uh, is to build your immune, immunity, right? Uh, one can only control the controllables, right? right. Uh, so, and this is a realization happening across uh, consumer segment. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing a lot of new entrants into this world of fitness. A uh, lot of young kids, young adults, getting and taking to fitness through home fitness. Um, and and that's, that's coming and, uh, you know, we are seeing that in terms of our sales in performance and fitness categories. Um, and, and which is very heartening to see. Also, the reason I feel that we are a bit lucky, a bit more lucky, is that sports has withstood uh, any kind of downturn and challenge in the world uh, because this is something so fundamental to human, uh, you know, uh, to human time, right, and existence. So uh, I'm, I'm, I personally find myself to be lucky doing this. Uh, Yes, I think there is enhanced interest in fitness and which can only grow because this pandemic has taught us that the best thing that we can do is to work on ourselves and keep ourselves strong, mentally and physically both. I'm glad you stressed that point of mental well-being because if you're mentally fit, you possibly can make yourself physically fit. Coming back to the business of retailing, the business of sports, fitness, fitness wear, um, you know, if you were asking yourself, said you have a responsibility which is beyond India. What are the learnings from other markets? You, at one point, were also the head of uh, cricket globally for Puma, right? Uh, what are the learnings that you've seen from other markets uh, that can be applied here? And I'm specifically talking about consumer behavior. How has COVID changed consumer behavior? And overall, how is consumer behavior changing? Uh, give us your learnings as applicable to the Indian market. Well, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a very broad question and I'll try to break that up. First and foremost, right now, consumer behavior is changing, the way people are consuming. I think a lot of the consumption will happen through e-commerce. E-commerce um, penetration will only increase. A lot of people who bought essential products on e-commerce are now buying non-essentials. So one has to be very ready for this change and, and uh, endorsement and uh, and adoption of, of e-commerce businesses need. Uh, one needs to follow consumer trend in their category very strongly because people are going to change their behavior in terms of what subcategories they are buying, what price points they are buying, how often they are buying, uh, where are they buying from. Even in retail, when they get in today, you know, uh, customers used to love in India, used to love service, right? Uh, and now, suddenly customers seek safety. They are getting into with all this uh, data that I have for the last 10, 12 days, I'm seeing that consumers are valuing brands who are prioritizing health and safety over anything else, right? So they don't actually want to be treated royally like Indian consumers wanted to, but they wanted to know that whether, you know, how many people is social distancing happening? Uh, is the Aroge Setu app be, be, be getting checked? What is happening with products that they have tried out? So across the board, there is a change. Um, I think if I have to generalize the entire thing, Anurag, I would say that um, uh, right now, people have to be flexible and nimble enough to adopt to new things, right? Uh, and I think that was... Even pre-COVID, that was true for, for, uh, for New India. But I think that has only got very expedited. That one has to be very nimble and quick and adopt. And one cannot have a strategy two years, three years. Uh, I think long-term strategy, one can have a long-term vision, but long-term strategy is passing. Abhishek Ganguly of Puma says, long-term vision is fine. 
long-term strategy possibly won't work. I think uh, another guest on my show said recently that if you don't have a plan, you're possibly better off than having a plan. You got to take a day as it comes. You got to work week by week. Coming back to the business of retailing, as you rightly yourself said that a lot of consumers will possibly use e-commerce as a route to access products or services. Uh, tell us, will the omni-channel retail experience uh, undergo a massive change in terms of mix or, or it will be a minor change? Well, if you look at what the consumers would expect and if one has to deliver to the new behavior of consumers, uh, it has to change. It has to evolve. I'll be honest with you. Um, in India, we've been, all the brands and retailers have been dabbling with the word omnichannel. But in reality, very, le very little has been uh, achieved till now. Um, we, we were one of the first brands to actually try out delivery from stores and we realized operational hassles and then we went back in a bit and then we went in. So we've been trying to adopt to uh, adapt. Uh, so sorry, we, we are trying to get in new uh, ways of uh, uh, doing business and omnichannel has been something very relevant for us last three, four years. I think we all need to expedite this. Um, and uh, I hope that as, as a company, uh, Puma, uh, we are very successful in this front because consumers today will probably consume uh, information somewhere, do commerce somewhere else, seek delivery in some other uh, uh, manner from some other uh, platform. So one has to seamlessly tie this entire thing together through technology. And for, for that to happen, I think a lot of operational hassles that currently exist in business need to be addressed. Thank you, Abhishek. You know, again, um, you talk to any brand owner, you talk to any CEO, MD, they will talk about how millennials are very important for them. Tell us for Puma, what does the role a millennial has to play in your growth? And how do you approach this segment of millennials? Well, 50% of India is below 25, uh, which means that's our biggest strength as a nation. Youth is the biggest strength of us as a nation as a, as a, as a, from a consumption standpoint. Um, as the brand uh, we stand for, uh, we, we appeal a lot to the young audience because our design, our product ethos, our uh, innovation appeals to the young young consumers mostly because you know it's it's bold it's on the edge uh, it's colorful uh, it's very design and looks and style centric uh, so it has always been very important for us uh, and uh, we have uh, we have had our product strategy our marketing strategy completely aligned to uh, the the youth of india uh, and that's what it has always been the case and that is not going to change because we stand for our, our entire brand and our, our product offering is around the young adults and the, and, 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 uh, the youth. Good. Uh, um, Abhishek, there are lots of questions coming, six questions and one comment, but we'll take that a little later. Is, you know, I keep saying, Abhishek, this world is now a 3C world. It's a collaborative, caring and contactless. Now, in this collaborative world, for example, would Puma look at tires with other brands, other companies, for example, maybe a tire with a Fitbit, you know, having inbuilt sensors and maybe, a, you know, a jogging a, a gear that you have within your shoes. So as health becomes big, important, well-being becomes even more important than it ever was. Do you see Puma collaborating with other players that, enhance that uh, health quotient? Well, we have had some successful collaborations in the past as well. Um, it is very important. I think uh, collaboration is extremely important. We've collaborated in the past with Kyofit, we've collaborated with Cred, uh, we've collaborated with a lot of, you know, with Make My Trip, a lot of digital platforms as well. And we will continue doing that wherever there is a common customer base and there is an alignment that, will, that can be done in mutual benefit, uh, we will continue that approach. 
um i think the second point that you said is is around uh, is is around having a purpose right i mean what was your exact word for it you said i uh, said collaborative caring caring contactless yes so, you know yeah so the second point i really believe in um and that's why i wanted to pick that up i believe that businesses today which have more than a commercial objective but a larger purpose where consumers can see through that um and and that those will really survive in the long run um uh, otherwise businesses and companies will come and go and today uh, consumers have a lot of options it's extremely important to have a purpose in your business um example with with us in puma we believe a lot on sustainability um and we want to give back to the society contribute to the circular economy and we are doing a lot even for uh, you know on the athletes front contributing to the up and coming young athletes so having the real purpose in business is extremely important i think this caring part i think with post covid will become even more uh, important relevant yeah um abhishek you know i mean sports brands are a lot linked with two things one is live events right you take any sports fan second is personalities that in some way embody those live events whether it's cricketing it's soccer and you can go on right now in the last 77 days live events have come to a halt whether it's football whether it's basketball whether it's cricket the ipl didn't happen uh tell us uh how does a brand that thrive on celebrities and live sports for positioning or enhancing the positioning uh, do during these times well sporting events and following of sports has definitely come down and it's a real pity i can tell you as as a um, you know with what of little sports, sports i i do myself i play myself or whatever sports i follow and i do follow quite a bit uh it's 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 one of the most difficult things to let go right i mean when you're used to it and i can i can understand every sports lover and sports fan uh going through the same so it's a real pity and we are all hoping we are all hoping that this is temporary right uh, truth being said that sports wear consumption hasn't gone down due to, has gone down but hasn't hasn't uh, become zero right just like uh, of course yeah so sports where our business continues and 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 uh, in fact last 15 days we've got uh, more than expected business uh, through uh, whatever stores we could open up and through e-commerce but to your point on live sports i can't visualize life without that because you know that's so compelling so gripping so inspirational uh, and i'm really hoping that uh, even if it is you know what one's talking about spectator less sports uh, and it's happening in the uh, in the premier league uh, and i think in india also it will start once we can control uh, you know new cases and recovery and gets into a bit more balance i'm sure that will happen and i hope that happens even though it will not be even half as good right because spectators make spectator sports um but at least something should happen at least tv viewership we need to cheer and we need to freshen our mind and sports is a great way to do that um and and live sports is a great way to do that so i really hope let's say an ipl uh, or or any other league that happens uh, even without spectators i'm sure it will do a world of good for people to just currently we're all consuming uh, uh, what i would term as negative content right i mean which is Uh, which is very pessimistic sometimes very concerning we need to free up our mind and and just you know get on with life and i think uh, some kind of sports will really help uh, thank you avishek uh, you know at this point i want to bring in some questions from the audience and then i'll bring in more questions from myself uh, how prachi chandramani from bangalore is asking how is puma india restructuring its core business i'm not sure you're restructuring but she's saying how you're dealing with covid that's how i kind of un, you know understand the question our second question is are you willing to partner with companies startups that bring products like fitbit fitness watches to consumer 
how could this be more innovative than it is now? She asked, yes. how did you yeah, manage the anxiety of employees when uh, lockdown started and how are you motivating them? Right. Um, I think at this point, any business leader like myself has, uh, has two major uh, responsibility. The first responsibility is that during such times when demand is down, biz, uh, business is down, uh, how, do you, how do you survive the business? So I think a lot of our focus is going to how can we, how can we literally survive this year, you know, with minimal impact, uh, with minimal uh, injury, right? Uh, is, is something that we are all working towards, whether it is cash flow or how much we can maximize whichever channels open, how can we grow our business online, how can we grow Puma.com. And we're focusing a lot into keeping our business going as much as is possible. Uh, and the reason is that we believe that it will be torrid time for everyone in the business. And if we come out with least impact or less impact, uh, we will probably be stronger when things are, uh, are because we will have less competition. You know, it's about suffering the injury lesser than others. Give us sports. Give us sports parallel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the second thing is, which is the third part of the question is, how do you keep the team motivated? I think my responsibility, today I'm responsible for 3,000 3, to 3,200 people and, and their families uh, are, are involved with it. So my biggest responsibility is how, do, how can I keep that, them going? So I'm very happy to say that I have announced in the company that there will not be any headcount cut uh, or salary cut for our people. Uh, in the balance of the year. Um, and that's something that we have had to manage has been taken very well with our employees because these are the employees who got us to number one position, right? And when times are tough, you need to be, uh, to be with them, right? And that's what has been my prime objective or our leadership's objective. Um, and we believe that if we keep the team, when things come back, this is the team which will start firing all cylinders and they will also value the company uh, which stood by them. So a lot of the focus is going on there. To talk about keeping the team engaged, I think work from home is, a, is, is something that we've all been doing. We're trying to do, we can communicate with each other very often. Uh, even when business was zero, we would still get into calls, discuss. I think communication is key. Um, you know, during these times, it's very important to do this with your employees, with your team members, uh, with, with partners outside, Partner, retailers, uh, retailers. retailers. And we are focusing a lot on ensuring that we communicate with people, even when they're not giving us the business. So these are some of the things that we are doing to keep us going. Uh, Sakshi Agarwal wants to know, how will you induce impulse buying now? Well, um, I think I think that's a that's a tough one uh, because people are not going to walk in, uh, you know, like they would generally do. And we are seeing that in the stores that we have opened. It is people who specifically have something in mind, uh, and they are coming in with that uh, uh, that uh, requirement in their mind, and the demand is already there before they enter. So impulse is is a challenge. I think. Um, E-commerce, uh, there will still be impulse purchase, but I think till things normalize, people just walking through, doing window shopping, coming in, trying out the product and buying products which they did not enter, intend to when they entered the store, this is going to be a challenge for some time. Okay, thank you for being so real. And you know, there are two more questions that are relevant. Saurabh Modak is asking, are you working on any new dresses, costumes, fabrics with antimicrobial antiviral properties such as uh, which could tackle hygiene which is a new consumer focus which you yourself said so yeah. i'm coming with up with new fabrics new you know properties of the products that you have see we always had uh, in our antro antimicrobial uh, fabrics we always had in our uh, uh, you know roster of products uh, I think it is important to call them out now and let the consumer uh, know uh, and educate the consumer on what we already had. Uh, so we have that. I think it's time now that we need to start communicating that more. 
Thank you. An anonymous attendee is asking is Puma planning to reduce physical store footprints in India considering the current scenario with, with friction between retail mall owners and brands? What is the future for way forward? It's a very difficult question for me to answer right now because these conversations are going on with, with real estate owners, uh, the mall owners. Um, and there is this conversation between retailers and mall owners. And I'm, I must admit that we have not found the middle path in every case. The conversation's still on. Um, I think all the mall owners at some stage will realize that they need the retailers uh, because without the retailers, the malls uh, you know, uh, don't function. So uh, I think the conversations on in a lot of cases, a um, lot of malls have understood that and, we, and, and arrived at a middle path on how we should tackle the financial, financial situation. So, so I would like to believe that we would not close stores uh, because we have a good proposition. We have the right number of stores in, in India uh, 370 monobrand stores, which I feel at this stage is not over penetration. It's not overdoing it. We were always conscious. And when things get back to normal, there will be demand across all of them. We want to stay put on that front. But I would like to feel that there will be some shopping centers who will not be able to continue their business. And hence, all of us will have to close. Um, uh, and, and I, I think those shopping centers which are proactive, understanding the reality, uh, instead of uh, you know um, staying hard on their point and saying that we have a financial metric to meet, which I'm sure they have, but the reality has to be endorsed because a shopping center has to have sustainable business from all its retailers. Uh, and, and those who understand that will have better chances of surviving. Thank you for again being real. Alok Jalan is asking you, with work from home going on for the whole year, how much it will it take on your business? Uh, so, you know, sometimes people wear because, you know, they're outdoors and they're going to office, you know. And so if they're going to work from home, does, you know, the bragging rights come down and then the sales of your brand and other brands uh, come down? Um. I think again, here we are a bit lucky. If you see work from home as a trend, people are, what are they wearing at home? It's the home essentials. They're wearing shorts, track pants, t-shirts, uh, polos. Uh, when their air conditioning is on, uh, they're wearing track jackets. Uh, and, and hence, these are all our categories. I think the more challenges for categories like formal wear, uh, wedding outfits, uh, you know, extremely, uh, business, uh, you know, oriented uh, suits and uh, and dresses, uh, stilettos, heels, uh, you know, uh, party wear. You know, those will have a longer period uh, to 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 recover. They will need a longer period to recover. But we are again a bit lucky because work from home trend actually works in the favor of of sportswear brands, and we are seeing it. You know, like people who would be wearing, uh, you know, shirts and tie in their office while meeting, work from home, uh, they're wearing t-shirts uh, or collar, collar polos, right? So it is working in our favor. Thankfully, I'm really fortunate to be in this industry. You, you know, uh, everyone talks, you, we talk about omni-chain. The questions that are coming through LinkedIn, and one of the questions is this whole term of digital, you know, physical and digital. Tell us... Uh, your sense of where it will be six to 12 months from now? Like I said, in the terms of omni-channel, I think there has to be a very strong integration between all channels. And the channel here means offline, online uh, commerce channels, which is retail and e-commerce. Uh, also, in terms of how people are using their social media. Um, so all kinds of uh, their dot-com, and, and that needs to be integrated to deliver customer experience. I have always believed in that to happen. Like consumers are already omnichannel, let's face it, or digital. Consumers today, or in the past also, they would uh, review a product somewhere else, uh, read the review somewhere else, buy somewhere else, uh, want to return somewhere else. Uh, and, and, 
and we as brands have the responsibility to tie this up and, and make it more convenient for the consumer. So yeah, to the point on digital or, or, or integration of platforms, um, one needs to have the right vision and operations to be able to do that. You, you know, uh, Prabal Chakrabarti is asking, what is the impact it will have on pricing of your products? <laughs> Well, um, will COVID have any impact on the pricing of your products or those products that compete with you? I think again, it's a it's a very uh, interesting question. But the way I tackle uh, this at work is the following: Right now, consumers are not actually expecting uh, prices or discount. Consumers are expecting that on in stores when they go and they want something, they should feel safe. So our first objective right now is that they should feel safe when they, when they go to stores. And it, is, it might sound easy on some of the 10 things or 15 things that we need to do, but it is very repetitive and hence very difficult to implement. And we are focusing all energies into ensuring that our stores are extremely safe. Second thing consumers are expecting online is uh, a wide range of catalog for them to choose from because they did not have the opportunity to buy uh, in the past. Um, and, and that's what we are doing. They're also expecting our warehouse to be uh, safe. You know, delivery is the packages for e-commerce to be safe. So we are working on it. I think at some stage when things, I think two months down the line, the question of price will emerge and become more relevant. When out and out people will again come out in stores or Shop, have the entire gumption to buy online and that's that time I, I believe that all of us brands have to look at uh, consumers expectations and 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 given that you know in a lot of cases people have had to take pay cuts there have been salary freezes people have lost jobs we might have to be realistic with regards to offering our price uh, for at least certain uh, months in the year for for a few months in the year uh, but at this stage, as, as I said, the focus is not to just open stores and offer, you know, uh, uh, better prices. Thank you so much. Ashish Agarwal wants to know, considering many people will be working out from home, is it possible for any new innovation targeting better usage during home workouts? Uh, and second, Advait Kurlekar from Pune asks, what is the future of Athletic leisure wear, according to you, you already talked about it, but uh, these questions have some relation to it. Okay, so home fitness, you know, work out from home. Look at the number of people who are getting into it. Um, and we have all the right products for it already. You know, for women, we have something which is um, uh, when they want to do yoga, pilates, or a more active workout, we have the right products for it. Uh, I think we had the products in place. Um, Always, and I think with more and more consumers joining the fitness bandwagon, probably uh, is a blessing in disguise from COVID standpoint. I think even when COVID will go, I hope these people continue uh, their fitness journey. That's on fitness, and I think that trend is very, very visible, um, um, and it's happening uh, all across in smaller towns as well, in different age groups as well, and we can see, we can ha we have the data to see that. The second thing is uh, on uh, on athletic leisure. I think that's a that's a global trend. You know, today uh, people are they know that sports inspired apparel for leisure wear is is extremely the most stylish and fashionable thing around. So whether it is airport looks or whether it is going out with friends or whether it is going to office now, a lot of people uh, use athletic leisure wear sneakers. Uh, and that's a that's a global fashion trend, um, and uh, uh, and and people are moving out from more constricted, defined, uh, formal uh, wear, and and wearing more sports inspired products. So across the board, if all people want to today, uh, you know, to go out and, and meet their friends or 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 step out for uh, a spin in the car. Uh, they're all wearing athletic leisure, and I think that's a that's a very very uh, interesting fashion trend. Thank you. I didn't want to take these names, but you know, I think 
you know, life is about abundance. Your Tansi Kudar is saying that Sketchers is growing very fast in India. There are also good chances the fast track brand could come up with full fledged sportswear. Uh, how is Puma dealing with the competition that it is facing? For example, Under Armour, Wildcraft, New Balance, etc., etc. Um, we are very happy with competition as long as we are the number one brand. Uh, so uh, competition is always welcome. Last year we had our revenues of fourteen hundred fourteen crores, um, making us by far the largest brand in sports. Um, and 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 some of these uh, competition brands have been doing well as well and I think which is good for the category. I, I believe more the merrier in the world of sports um, because we would want sports and fitness to be endorsed and athletic leisure trend to be endorsed more by Indians. Uh, and uh, the more the number of brands uh, who, uh, you know, uh, make this more popular, the better. So we don't mind competition at all, at all. I mean, as long as we are the number one. Thank you. Uh, I hope you've answered almost all questions in some form and shape. There's only one question. A sort of model is another follow-up question. As you said, there will be more focus on sustainability. What will be the change in Puma's sustainability strategy using sustainability in your consumer communication? Well, um, I think the last point is very relevant of this question. But as far as sustainability is concerned, this has been inherent to our brand. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, when we started uh, having a mission for sustainability, uh, we in, in 2015, we had a goal um, where we said that this much percentage of our uh, fabric uh, needs to come from sustainable sources. And uh, at that time, we were around 20, 22%. Uh, we are already reaching, uh, we've by 20, uh, the target that we set for ourselves in 2020, we beat that in 2018. So a large part, almost 90% of our fabrics are coming from sustainable sources. We've also done a tie up uh, uh, with First Mile, which is basically making uh, footwear apparel accessories out of, uh, out of plastics. Um, and, and, and that's a process in which, you know, uh, the plastic is converted into a fabric and then uh, a yarn which is converted into a fabric and then made into products. So we, we, we really, really believe in this that you know, we, we need to reduce our impact on the world, uh, on the planet. Um, and, and as a global brand, uh, we will always do that. On, in terms of communication, I think it's very important because we also realize the good thing here is that the young consumers today value sustainability much more than the older generation did. Uh, and, and, and the concern for the planet has, has only become stronger. Uh, so I think it's very important for us to communicate uh, what we are doing for, for our consumers to know, or also to inspire the entire ecosystem of fashion and retail uh, around sustainability. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, I want to add two, three questions and we'll take some more questions. Three more questions have come up. Uh, you know, how does the, you know, more and more millennials are accessing content through digital channels, whether it's YouTube, whether it's social media, whether it's TikTok, whatever. Uh, how does the marketing mix of Puma change going forward? We talked about the omni-channel strategy. We talked about digital. We talked about how consumers are doing different pieces in different touch and access. Uh, so how does it impact your marketing strategy? Well, um, thankfully, we don't need to change this strategy because we were always digital. Um, digital first has been something in our media mix, in our content plan, in our campaign planning for the longest of the time. Um, I remember when, uh, you, know, you know, in 2010, or 2010 is when we did our first Facebook campaign around engagement, like that, that back. And now, of course, Instagram is a very, very important uh, media platform for us. Um, also, we work very closely with Google um, and, and, and also with e-commerce platforms and, under, and treat them like media channels and not just commerce channels. So e-commerce, uh, sorry, uh, digital 
is extremely important for mix for us in in uh, in marketing it has always been the case if you even look at our tie ups with some of the uh, celebrities our partnership with virat kohli uh, or karina kapoor or sara ali khan um, or kl rahul or mary com all of this we have activated uh, you know uh, the common mission that we have through digital platforms uh, through social media platforms so it has always been the case and i think one of our strongest um, uh, one of our key reasons to be successful in india is to have endorsed this quick and having um, having having made success out of it so as a brand we feel that we are content creators we also believe that our influencers and our uh, our ambassadors are content creators themselves and one needs the art of content creating uh, and needs to use that with the science of media selection uh, so like so so marketing become art of content creation and marry it with the science, science of, media, of selection. media selection i like that. so um, so i think i think that's something that we have always believed in and has been successful we are going to continue that and make ourselves sharper on this front abhishek if we talk to you a year from now what do you foresee we are doing in the next 12 months give us a realistic peek into the future it may or may come alive 100% of what you think it may be close to it but tell us how do you see the next 12 months is it my wish or is it my realism i think they have to marry themselves at some they have to have a confluence at some point otherwise you'd be a very dissatisfied man <laughs> well um, one year down the, down the line i want to achieve as a company the same levels of ambition and aggression that we had um six months back uh and that means a lot because that means a lot has to happen in the period uh and most important thing that has to happen in this period is that as a company we need to stay strong and the company needs to survive with minimal injury right so the next six months is going to be treated in a very different manner and then i'm hoping that the man that human kind will solve for itself the challenge that we are all encountering to, uh, today and by spring summer next year um, the world is is getting back to normal and and we are back to our old ways and that's the time that we would slowly start recouping uh, the business um, getting the business back have the same kind of uh, you know aggression like i said till then it is about sustenance till then it is about strength uh, till then it is about hope and till then it is about togetherness with the 3200 people that we have fantastic uh, i want to ask you one more question you said that in the first few days you know it was personally challenging for you for example i've said this before that the first 3 4 days i felt lost you know i i felt that you know that you know what will happen to our business and i was very unsure if i may have to use one and then i gathered myself and uh, we are doing what we are doing we are pivoting digitally they are becoming video we doing virtual events and we are in a better place than we ever were in terms of our audiences and the kind of content we are creating and with the regularity with which we are creating so in some way covid has forced us to transform to change to adapt whatever we do tell us uh, abhishek in the first one week what were the emotions as an individual and as a leader as you know that being a leader is is a lonely job you know what you feel only you can feel i i don't think it can be transferred and shared in the entirety with someone um, it can be shared in bits and parts with people who understand what you're going through but tell us uh, what was your mindset in the first few days well um, personally i will first address this personally and then um, you know as uh, my my leadership role i think personally i went through a lot because i also lost my father uh, during this time so it was very challenging i lost him uh, uh, end of march and this was during the lockdown so i think initially i was grappling with you know personal grief uh, on on and that front and then all of this was happening together so i think i had um, i did i i did have quite a bit of challenge 
Um, and given, you know, the role of my father in my life, I think uh, I felt, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a lot of despair. Um, and then I started coming out of, of, of this. And at the same time, I had to address the situation that we were in. I would say that I've only got stronger. And this is not just for the sake of saying it. I really believe in it. That I, my mindset got strong. I think for the first time in my life, I had to deal with something I was completely not prepared for. Um, and as far as my leadership is concerned, I think one thing I've done is to communicate with the team share with the team very openly and very transparently. You know, uh, yes, it's a lonely job because a lot of times we hold things to ourselves. I have bared the company's uh, financials to the company's approach to my team, to, to why we need to do something, uh, why we are not opening stores right now again, uh, why do we need to really conserve cash and putting it bare uh, in front of, of everyone. Uh, and I think uh, to your point on leadership loneliness, I think I'm, I'm again, I feel lucky because I, have, I, I really have a team uh, who, with whom there is nothing which is hidden. Uh, and that really helps. Uh, so I have been able to share my challenges uh, with the team. And they well, uh, you know, it's, they get it and they understand it, and which is, which is fantastic because everyone in the company knows the state of business and my state of mind and is no different from theirs. Thank you. We, we may God give you strength and, uh, you know, fathers are like lighthouses. And uh, two of my friends lost the father who was also your teacher and my teacher, Dr. Pritam Singh. And, you know, uh, you know, I feel that lot, but father is very personal. Coming back to a professional question, uh, you know, Tanvi Daswani is asking this question. I'll put it to you. How many of your products come from China with service India? Well, uh, more from India than China. One will be very surprised about that uh, because we have had a very strong India sourcing, especially in apparel. All, um, apparel in India, as a lot of us know, is of global standard and we have had for the years together a very strong uh, sourcing structure in India. Um, also, uh, in uh, some of the enterprise for it, footwear, flip-flops, sandals are made in India. Um, as a company, um, we have had a very diversified sourcing strategy. And hence, a lot of our products are also manufactured in, in ASEAN. Example, in Vietnam is one of our very, very uh, you know, important sourcing bases. So, uh, no, we're not overtly... Uh, dependent on one particular country, far from it. Okay, okay. Um, now, there's also Ashish Agarwal asking another question. Outdoor activities and going out will be reduced for quite some time. It will lead to less wear and tear of shoes and other fitness products. What's your outlook for sales decline for Category and for Puma in, in the second half of the year? There are apparels growing and I'm sure it will grow faster because, you know, like work from home, uh, you know, work, um, home fitness, these are the two trends which will drive our apparel uh, business. Also for our fitness uh, related uh, footwear, uh, people are consuming that as well because even at home, people need to have the right footwear uh, to work out. Uh, you can't work out bare feet unless uh, you're probably doing yoga and very few fitness forms allow you to work, uh, work out bare feet. So there is attraction, even if that's indoors. Uh, yes, there will be an impact of, uh, of people not moving outdoors for, for quite some time. Uh, how much does that mean uh, in the business is very difficult to know. So I don't know how much of our revenues will fall from last year. We want it to grow by 25%. Um, that's, that, that ambition is, is is kept, kept at bay for the moment. Uh, we don't know how much it will go down to, but I know that, you know, thankfully in our category, uh, we won't deplete too much. You know, we won't deplete and become 60% of our business. Uh, we will we'll definitely go down on last year. Very difficult to predict sitting here today in, uh, in June, how much this number will be. And there are uh, 
as she says another follow up question for people in traditional marketing career like brands market research what's the most important new school skill one should learn uh uh well i i said that uh, which i believe in the art and science of uh, of of marketing i think marketing will continue to be a, a, a lot on the art side which i meant is the content and the campaign side uh it will continue to be creative but i think the way people today brands will engage uh engage the the audience um the the target audience will be very different so i think looking at new ways of new age ways of doing campaigns uh on the creative front um and content creation this is one uh, area the other is the you know the science of marketing which requires understanding of what we all call performance marketing which is uh you know when when you put in a dollar how much return do you get in and this is all of the digital platforms it's very clear so this is the choice of media and understanding understanding platform so for example uh, you know people have to understand the google google platform uh, very well and how do you uh, you know whether it is display or whether it is search uh, and these are the skills which will which will uh, become very very handy in future thank you abhishek there is a comment from prabal chakravarti truly enjoyed abhishek's authenticity uh, i want to take one more question specific to marketing and branding is how, vinesh vijayan is asking how far will puma's marketing budgets across media platforms be impacted uh, due to current scenario where there will be a cut or it will stay the same well we are hoping that next year when we are back to our ambitious ways uh, you know uh, whatever we are targeting we had targeted for this year um, will do next year so we are holding back on lot of our some of the campaigns that we wanted to do lot of the sporting events are also getting shifted to next year uh, and we are holding back on some of our marketing campaigns a lot of our marketing campaigns uh, for next year uh, and uh, uh, because you know uh, we would get back to ambition again next year this year however we will continue to engage with our consumers while demand is down it's very important for us to be in the minds of our consumers and and uh, and uh, stand by what we need to stand by as a brand so we are doing a lot um, you know on relevant content like work uh, you know like work from home um, uh, home fitness a lot of our brand ambassadors are posting videos around that we are doing campaigns and challenges and user generated content around that so even this year we will continue the engagement in the most relevant uh, manner possible for this year thank you there is also one question coming from riyas khan apart from survival what are the steps you would take to put uh, to increase your top line and bottom line he's written evita but i'm not playing uh... well one needs to look at one's cost of doing business which is operating expenses extremely strongly and one needs to it's 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 a year where one needs to become extremely conscious of that um so revenue and demand is not always in one uh, one's hand given the situation so one can only focus uh, and maximize the opportunity so how how can one focus on maximizing revenue you know one needs to increase the presence in digital pl uh, platforms on e-commerce one needs to have very strict health and safety guidelines in in the stores when they reopen so that consumers feel safe when they come one needs to follow customer trends and accordingly merchandise the stores um and and these are the ways to maximize sales in terms of uh, in terms of operating costs one needs to think twice uh, over before spending the dollar so all flab this is the year to cut the flab get bare minimum what is required and i think in the process again a silver lining one, one might learn ways to do businesses uh in future also in a far more efficient manner uh which means that you know uh you cut you you do the same business with much lesser lesser operating expenses is a time to think uh you know do we really need it is the question if we didn't have it uh, what will be the impact what will will there be a short term impact will there be a long term impact on the business 
beautiful way to simple way to uh, Sora Modak is again commenting. Really enjoyed your interview, Mr. Abhishek. I like the optimism and authenticity of you. Even in such a crisis, I gained a lot of positive energy from this program, especially being in the textile industry. And there was another related question which I didn't ask. They said, "Will Puma ever make face masks? Uh, you th are you getting into face masks?" We've already launched face masks because we also realized that there is a shortage of availability and distribution. So we've already launched as of last week. Uh, we had to be quick. Uh, we've launched the face mask, we'll, and it seems like the face mask is going to here to here to stay. So we are trying to make that uh, portfolio interesting and wider, um, uh, which we will launch in the next month. So yeah, we've already launched it. Uh, this is going to be a reality for some time, uh, and and not for commercial reasons, to be honest, because we're also uh, you know. A part of that sales is going through uh, certain CSR activities, so it's not a, a, a profit-driven initiative, but it is more of making things available from our uh, <coughs> network. My last question to you, Abhishek, we are at 528, is that uh, you outlined your professional goals one year from now. Uh, tell, uh, tell me, where do you see the economy six months to 12 months from now? Overall economy, especially in context of demand overall demand, the sentiment. Um, of course, it will depend on whether we get a vaccine soon, how last the next, you know, how tough are the next two months. It will. I know these two are big variables, but broadly, where do you see? I think the economy will definitely be under pressure uh, for the next one year, uh, if we are lucky. Uh, the economy, it might take a couple of years. Uh, the, the earlier we solve for it, the earlier we all feel confident to go out and get back to our normal ways, uh, as normal as possible. Um, I think uh, the lesser will be the hit on the economy. Uh, I think the government has, has its task cut out. Um, it needs to focus on certain sectors much more than before. I'm a firm believer that manufacturing is India's opportunity in various segments including the segment I am in, uh, and we haven't done much uh, from an international market standpoint. People are looking at alternative sourcing countries, and India is a, a great prospect on that. So there are certain uh, you know, ways in which economy can really be bolstered and, and, and jobs can, can, got, can be got back, uh, the jobs that people lost in the process. So a lot needs, it, it can be done. I'm also, I, I, that's on one side. The other side, I feel that India is a very resilient country. And oh. the fundamentals of our country is very, very strong from a future standpoint. I mentioned one in the conversation about 25% of Indians being below, uh, sorry, 50% of the Indians being below 25. That's a huge opportunity for India. So in the, in, 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 I think once the sentiment is back, if today, somebody had to put money in a country, right? Just think in terms of a global, uh, you know, investor. Uh, India will rank in the top two, three countries that they would like to put money in. So money will come back to India. I think it is about the government to create the right, uh, you know, environment and policy for, for, for this. And infrastructure. Infrastructure for it. But otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic not for the sake of being optimistic, but I can tell you that I believe the fundamentals of the country is very, very strong uh, from a future standpoint. Um, and that will happen. We are very resilient as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a what should I say, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a community, as a community is yes. very, very resilient. And you will see that, you know, we, we, we will, um, it will not take long. All these people who are today, talking extremely negative and positive, just when we will see one uh, thing which, which will help, which will make us believe in the future, we will all start, uh, you know, uh, polarizing ourselves towards that direction. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, just before I go, I want you for your final word, uh, what is the advice you have for leaders, for CXOs, for people tuned in, uh, so that they can make themselves relevant for the future. Uh, is, this, is there an advice that you would like to give to all our viewers who are logged in? How do you stay relevant uh, 
as you go forward. If the world is, there is a new abnormal, I don't call it the normal, I call it the new abnormal. Uh, how do you make sure that you survive as the world has changed? Not only survive, but thrive. Well, um, advice um, is, is sometimes very difficult to give because everyone's context is different. Uh, but if I had to say something which I firmly believe in is empathy is a very important element in business. Um, and more than ever before, empathy is extremely important. Whether it is leadership, whether it is the way in which you have your company's purpose laid out, uh, empathy is is very very uh, important and, and uh, element. Um, so that's one thing that I, I I would say. The second thing is that hope uh, is is such an important word today, and we need to stay very hopeful and believe that humankind will solve for itself. Just like we could not uh, imagine how we got into this, uh, we can't imagine today how we will get out of it. Right? So uh, all these projections sometimes uh, are too scientific uh, than uh, what is nature's way of doing things. Thank you, Abhishek. I can't let you go without asking this question. I'm a big movie buff. Okay, I don't Unluckily, you know, I haven't watched enough movies. I'm working too hard, which is great. You know, I love what I'm doing. Um, but, you, you know, I'm sure you watch Jerry Maguire, right? I don't watch movies. I don't watch movies. So I, don't was, watch uh, movies or I don't watch movies and that's a criticism that everyone in the family no, okay, has. Okay. Nothing. But have you watched Jerry Maguire? I honestly, I'm telling you, I just don't watch movies. And that's, uh, that's a real, in some ways. But you must watch Jerry Maguire. I'm okay. sure you read about Jerry Tom Cruise, it, it sometimes lands me in very awkward situation in social settings when people are only talking about uh, about about movies. No, I was talking about movies set in sporting background, you uh, know. Those yeah. are, so those are the movies. I'll send you a list. Uh, sure. If you watch them, you'll. I promise you, you'll enjoy them. So I'll move away from movies. Huh? Sports-oriented movies is yes. the best probably I can get. To. You can start can with Jerry it. Maguire. I don't think you'll regret. It's a lovely movie. But then I'll change. I was gonna. So what is? Tell me a favorite uh, sporting event or a climax in a match, whether in soccer or cricket. That is your number one. You know, I'm sure it is difficult for people who love sports to choose from between one match and another match. Uh, but you know, what's your number one? I was. I was. Um, you know, I have. I was very very young that time, just growing up. And I, I watched Maradona win uh, the World Cup for, uh, uh, for Argentina. And I was, honestly, I was, I was that time just eight year old. Um, and uh, and in a very small town called Bhagalpur, you know, which... class uh, Bhagalpur. Amitabh Thakur. And Ashok Thakur, who Mandal Okay. Okay. So yeah. So so I, I belong to that small town, and 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 that time uh, sports. Wahape, the maximum sports you would do is 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 play cricket. But thankfully, Doordarshan, which was the only channel, would would have uh, you know the Wimbledon's, the French, all the Grand Slams. It would have all the FIFA uh, World Cups, and I that I, I vividly remember that watching Maradona and, and people talk about hand of God. I remember that moment. Uh, you know, as an eight-year-old child in a small town. So, hand of God in that game and then, uh, all, you know, the, the, uh, the, the goals he scored, the one which he scored single-handedly is etched in my memory. Uh, extremely uh, uh, inspirational. Very, very fortunate to have met Maradona because Maradona uh, endorsed uh, uh, Puma and I've met him in Germany uh, more than twice. I mean, um, my fan moments. My other fan moments uh, related to inspiration is, of course, Mr. Usain Bolt uh, and, and what he did, uh, you know, having, of course, I did, I never watched him live, but he came to India and we did an event with him in, 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 in Chinda Swami Stadium. Uh, and and, and to, it was not like a proper sporting event, but he played cricket, by the way, because he's a Jamaican. And we made him play cricket uh, with UB and Bhaji and all these guys. Uh, he enjoyed it. And uh, 
just the aura of the man and 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 uh, is is fantastic so i can think of two of these and of course the- if you want to read the outside the boundary faster than the ball <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, outstanding personality, uh, so inspirational. You know, when, when you were watching Diego Maradona and all, you know, my favorite uh, footballers were Marco and Baston, Ruth Marco Gillard, Marco. Frank Rijkaard. You know, yeah. those. I don't. My son watches it. So like, you know, so I'm older than you, so you know, you know, I go back. You know, so, you know, I mean, I mean, for example, I ask people who's Ili Nastase. They don't know who's really Nastase, and it it hits me. I'm also a quizzer, so I tend to. But my favorite is the Jimmy Connors and yeah. John McEnroe uh, tennis match. I don't think that that final is my you know. And I I I grew up watching Stefan Edberg, Ivan Lender, Mats Wilander. You know, that's the kind the cool Swedes who just won't get angry. You know, so anyway, one of these days I must know. take a dig at you because I don't remember Jimmy Connors uh, and and Bjorn. No, no problem. You you were so young. So, yes, yes. <laughs> he was before me. So young, yeah. No problem. They were these were tennis uh, just yeah, to, yeah. these were tennis players so that you don't get it wrong. But uh, I, you know. of course, I mean, but Max Villander, uh, Boris Becker, Stefan Edberg, Lendl, and their entire uh, you know the, uh, before Sampras came and and yeah. take. I mean, it's it's an amazing time to have. Uh, you know, a uh, Roger Federer, uh, Djokovic. I mean, to have players who are playing for such a long time and continue to perform, and having three, four players is just—it is—it is a miracle. You know, just to you know have three, four players who are so consistent and they look forward to playing each other and kind of the sports is about being better than yourself every day, every hour. So, it's a bit, so good, uh, Abhishek. Uh, good to talk to you about brands, business, Puma, COVID. Uh, and sports i look forward to having another conversation soon again with you and i hope you watch the movie by then i'm going to send you my recommendation tonight uh, of the movies i've watched and i promise you won't regret that uh, we wish you luck in your mission to keep puma business strong and growing and to make sure that the puma brand is even more relevant to uh, its tg uh, we wish you luck in looking after the 3000 odd colleagues you have and I look forward to another conversation with you soon. Thank you. God bless you. Good evening. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.